Hi YouTube, my name is Alex and this is part two of the science behind orgone. So I'm going to briefly talk about a couple examples of orgone devices and then I'm going to go into um, the types of shapes that you want to create orgone out of and uh, the materials you want to use. So first I want to talk about Patrick Flanagan's earth resonance generator. This is a special design for a Mobius loop which uses two conductors separated by a dielectric which is um, commonly referred to in electronics as a capacitor. But this capacitor is self-looped in a way that isolates the orgone energy into circularly polarized leftward spinning scalar waves. And the leftward spinning scalar waves have a very positive effect on all biological systems, whereas a rightward spinning polarized scalar wave would have very negative effects. And there are currently several antennas, uh, cell phone antennas, which create a rightward spinning polarized wave in order to cause harm to biological systems. And it's been causing some pretty detrimental effects to both people, plants, and animals alike. Um, so Patrick Flanagan's Earth Resonance Generator, you can find um, some construction details online. It is a very powerful orgone device and it utilizes three-dimensional geometry of the conductor in order to um, concentrate the orgone energy in a more beneficial way. So another person who created a device like this, his name is Joe X. He created a device called the Joe Cell, which causes a transmutation effect uh, of the water, which is used as a dielectric in the system. And the reason that it causes a transmutation effect is because it concentrates the orgone to such a degree that it creates a stress in um, the scalar wave, space-time um, continuum, if you will, the field which is all around us. It creates, it creates such a stress in the center of this device that um, it pulls energies into the device from higher dimensional sources. Um, now, most Joe cells created are utilized to pull ether gas through the water and utilize this to run a gasoline engine on. And the ether gas is an actual gas that's produced by the ether. And um, when you produce this type of gas, it's like brown and sticky out of the orgone cell. And this is not a perfect cell. This is not a perfect design because the, uh, the ether gas is not actually brown and sticky substance. It is a white, a luminescent substance which is held at high pressure and uh, manifests itself in electric-like discharges. But the Joe cell, it utilizes the ether in the water in such a way that it creates this, what some people refer to as hydroxy gas, but really it's not hydrogen and it's not produced from the water itself. It's a transmutation effect of the ether gas and it'll create an implosion effect in a gasoline engine instead of the explosion effect used by fossil fuels. And it won't utilize any water in the actual Joe cell. So it'll create this um, gas continually, and it is a very efficient energy source. Um, and it's been um, written about, it's been scientifically proven, but it's also been shrouded in a bunch of misinformation which is why I recommend you look up the Experimenter's Guide for Making a Joe Cell because this is the only book that I've found that doesn't have misinformation in it and has a plethora of information about orgone and how to create the Joe Cell device if you're interested. So um, those are a couple of devices which use orgone in a more classical way. Something that uses orgone in a less classical way is Tesla's magnifying transmitter. Now Nikola Tesla created a device which utilized electricity and a large amount of copper surface area and wood as the dielectric as well as air as the dielectric and um, it pushed essentially pushed um, very high frequency high voltage current into the ground and when you have um, high frequency high voltage current going into the ground at a certain rate which is about a million times a second then the ether will create like a rebound effect and um, coming in the opposite direction of the electricity going down to the ground will be pure ether gas under very high pressure. 
and Tesla utilized this energy, this pure form of ether energy um, and orgone to create a world system of power transmission because orgone is all around us. We are living in a field of constantly fluctuating orgone. And if you can utilize this field, for instance, to send waves through it um, longitudinally by use of scalar waves, then you are able to pick up on those waves from any point in the universe because a scalar wave is a non-local event. It is um, analogous to uh, if you were underwater and you were to compress uh, a ball of water, then all the water around it would have to move inwards upon that ball. And then if you kind of like pulsated the pressure on that ball and you were under an ocean, which is to say you were in a medium of water, then you would create fluctuations, longitudinal fluctuations in the water that would propagate in all directions. And this is what um, Tesla did. So he says his magnifying transmitter was analogous to a tuning fork underwater, where the ether was the dampening effect on the tuning fork. And um, his system was creating a constant uh, vibrating effect in the fork, which propagated waves through the water um, and utilized the dampening effect of the water on the, um, on the fork itself to create these longitudinal waves. And uh, I would study the work of Tom Bearden a little bit further in detail, as I referred to on the last video, in order to understand what longitudinal waves really are from an engineering perspective. But getting back to orgone energy, the three-dimensional shapes of the conductors utilize the orgone energy much more powerfully than two-dimensional shapes, such as aluminum foil or like copper foil or anything that's um, a flat two-dimensional plane that you create your geometry out of. You want to utilize three dimensions, and you want to utilize it in a way that taps into the space-time itself. And how you do this is you use sacred geometry. Sacred geometry is, um, when it is correctly used, which has to be very precise, um, it will create a warp in the space-time that allows constant energy to be brought in at a higher rate than um, if you were using a simple, for instance, like a square piece of copper. That will only utilize the current that is based on its surface area and, its, um, and how far away it is from the ground, its elevation. Uh, whereas if you use a three-dimensional shape uh, that's using the sacred geometry, then you can create a vacuum in space-time that will create a more powerful um, orgone effect at a very constant rate. And so when you're creating your orgone devices, I suggest that you mess around with different geometries, both two- and three-dimensional shapes, and... Um, different dielectrics, such as the Joso, which used water as its dielectric, um, whereas the Patrick Flanagan Earth Resonance Generator used air and paper as its dielectric, as did Tesla. 